Welcome. Today is October 9th, and I'd like to call to order the Town Council regular session at 7.30. If you could please all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Could we please have the roll call, Dale? Council President Whaley. Present. Council Vice President McAtee. Here. Councilwoman Eddy. Here. Councilwoman Fogarty. Here. Councilman O'Neill. Here. All members present. Thank you, Dale. We have the approval of the minutes of previous meetings. We have the work session of September 24th, 2012. I move approval of those minutes. Second. Motion and second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We also have the approval of the minutes of the regular session, September 24th. I approve those minutes. Second. second. Motion and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Would any town council person like anything removed from the consent agenda? I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. second. Motion and second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next on the agenda is licenses. We have a resolution granting a Class F 19-hour beverage license to Washington County VFW Post 916 for a harvest supper to be held on Saturday, October 20th from 6 to 10 at the VFW Hall, 155 High Street, Wakefield, Rhode Island. The proceeds to benefit their building fund. Application by Raymond Green, 1936 Kingston Road, Wakefield, Rhode Island. And do we have Raymond here? Welcome. If you could just tell us a little bit about the dinner. Well, we're, we're trying to raise some money so we can hook up the gas line that's going through here now. Uh, we've had a tough year with the state made us put an ansel system in and we had to put a roof on so we need going to need a little help to get the gas line put in so i'm going to run a supper for hopefully raise enough to buy a gas burner and stuff like that very nice any questions here at the table polly how much does the gas burner cost to install uh, 750 dollars I'll probably make maybe four to five, but I mean, it's a help. Thank you. Jim, did you have your hand up with a question? Yeah, what did you spend on those other capital projects this year, the roof and... Um, well, we spent uh, $7,000 to put a roof on, and the state uh, ANSEL system cost us 2500 And was that covered by uh, money you had in the account, or are you still raising money? No, we're a nonprofit organization. We have to raise our own money, so. All right, so you're still short that money or you've been slowly no, raising? No, we've, you know, it drained our bank accounts, but that's, they're all paid. Okay, all right, all right, great, all right, thank you. Carol and then Kathy. Uh, Mr. Green, how much are the tickets to attend the We're charging supper? $20. $20, and who's doing the cooking? I do. You do? Yes. So what are you having? We're having a two different lasagnas. We're having a regular lasagna and the vegetable lasagnas. We're having meatballs, pasta, baked beans, salads, homemade desserts, bread, coffee. Wow, sounds terrific. And we're gonna have some door prizes to draw, so. so uh, Very good. Kathy? And where can we get those tickets if we'd like to purchase them? Did you buy at the door or do you need a, number, a head count beforehand? I, I like to have reservations because of head count so I know what to prepare. But, right. Uh, I'm going to have some at the door, I think. Okay. So but you can always call my, my number and uh, I, I have the tickets. Do you want to give it out to the public so if they want to call you it's since you have seven, a eight, three. Yeah, Wait a minute. Seven eight two six three four eight. Seven eight two six three four eight. Seven eight two six three four eight. Yes. Right. 
When was the last time you did a supper? Was it like last year? I can remember going to one and the food was, was delicious. I think it was two years ago two we years. had one of these, yes. Mm. Yeah. And that, that was a big one and we raised $1,700 that night. Yeah. Wow. It was a great turnout. So, food was uh, great. We haven't got the amount of people now that we had, you know. Yeah. And do you have flyers that you're distributing through town to get the word out? No, no. Uh, just getting the word out with members and stuff like that, but it's not working out. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully this is going to help. Can't get tonight. around like I used to. So. I, yeah. You know. Yeah. All right, pa Jim. Uh, what What is your current membership? Uh, right now, one thirty-seven. One thirty-seven. Average age about eighty. <laughs> eighty. <laughs> yes. But do you have some Iraqi, Afghan, uh, you know? Uh, members of uh, getting those hard. forces. We can't get any of these kids to join right now. It's, you know, they, we, of course, we don't have a bar, which we don't want. Yeah. But uh, you know, that seems to what they want. And, you know, it's, I don't think we need it. So. Yeah. Okay, Ray, thank you. Any other questions here for Ray? I move you. approval of new license A. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we wish you the best of luck, Ray. Yeah. Thank you very now much. I'm going to put it on my calendar. Thank you. Good luck. Next item on the agenda is many pages. I believe it is comments from interested citizens. Anybody would like to come to the mic and speak? This is comments from interested citizens. Seeing none, does anyone here at the town council table have any comments? I just have a few. The, um, there was a walk down in Watch Hill and Westerly, Westerly over the weekend. And South County Hospital had a team, and my daughter and I walked, and South County Hospital, the cardiac and rehab gym um, received an award, so that was a great thing that happened. Um, for many of you, we had the 12th anniversary at the Senior Center on Tuesday, October 2nd, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity um, to showcase all the great work that the town does with our seniors. And uh, there was also a walk um, to s support the Animal Rescue League yesterday down at the Ocean Mist, and I would say they've had about 200 um, participation, and uh, that was another great success. And. I just also want to let everyone know that the ribbon cutting for the McDonald's will be opened on October 23rd. That I know has been, all the youth is looking for that. Any other further comments here from town council? I'd just like to mention the wine and food festival that the Chamber of Commerce put on, uh, I believe it was a week ago Wednesday, and it was a fabulous event, attended by like 200 people, about 12 to 15 vendors, and uh, I think it'll become something annual, and it was at the uh, Palisades Mill. Right, and a lot, of that, a lot of that was going to some charitable organizations. That was a great event. So we have some wonderful things happening here in town. Any other comments? With that, I'm going to turn to the town manager's report. Thanks, Ella. Um, I have a couple of updates tonight. Uh, the first one is... Uh, somewhat important. It's a the town just recently received a notice of violation from the excuse me the Rhode Island Department of Health uh, relative to the South Shore water system uh, and specifically the Mortucket tank. Um, they it was found to have a, a drinking water microbiological standards um, uh, violation. And basically, what that means is the fact that there was a, the presence of a total coliform bacteria, which is not harmful. Uh, it's not the fecal coliform that we, we hear uh, much more about. Um, it's a tier two non acute violation of the standards. Um, 
recently, uh, in the past few days, uh, Public Services has started to receive, actually it would have just been today, since yesterday was a holiday, uh, calls from neighbors in that area, especially the Mortucket Road area, as they're starting to sense the fact that the division is, has been cleansing the water with uh, the chlorination process that's required by the Rhode Island Department of Health. Um, the system in that area, uh, speaking to John Schock today, uh, is already being bled out there uh, using the hydrants and other um, outlets in those particular areas to cleanse the system. Uh, they expect it to be um, addressed you know, within the next week or so. We have, um, because it's a non-emergency situation, uh, although it's a tier two uh, notice, uh, the requirement on the town is, is that we do provide uh, notification to anybody impacted uh, by the violation. Uh, Public Services has initiated that process. We have over the next 30 days, and clearly, clearly it'll be much faster than that over the next week or two uh, for us to be able to engage the public and just to let them know what's going on. I think people could uh, easily sense a change in the quality of the water due to the uh, increased concentration of chlorination there. Uh, we don't yet know uh, what the source is. Um, they say uh, from the information that we have available that it's, uh, it's uh, naturally materializes. It can come from a lot of different sources. It's not harmful. Uh, there is no need to boil water or to have any other type of restriction. Uh, the information the Department of Health puts out is also, it's, it's excellent, and, and John is compiling all of their templates at this point. Uh, for those people that have well water, uh, there are a set standard of procedures and a process you should follow uh, that are not connected to the system. Uh, for also, just for general purposes, in fact, if you ever had a problem uh, of a similar nature with total coliform um, in your well. So uh, they're putting out some great information and we hope to have more on this. Uh, there is a, a retesting process that the town has to adhere to um, relative to uh, being cleared uh, of the violation. Uh, we hope to have um, some results, uh, you know, specifically it's um, over October 2nd and October 4th is when the original samples were taken. Um, four samples were taken on the 2nd and three on the 4th. Um, a total of three of the seven came up uh, uh, positive for that particular type of, uh, of bacteria. Um, it said that the standard is that no more than one sample per month is acceptable. So we'll go through that process. Um, and, uh, and make sure that we uh, adhere to the standards that, that they've set in, uh, and we'll make sure we interact with the public as well and anybody affected by the, uh, by the violation. Thank you, Andy. The, uh, the second is just a reminder for everyone in the community regarding the town's um, community notification system, a system that was put into place relative to uh, giving the town the ability to communicate with residents in an emergency situation uh, prior to, post, and during, um, and then also the ability for us to disseminate information on just general community information. Um, in a situation like the one I just noted, uh, we're, we're lacking in terms of residents going onto the portal, which is the Everbridge portal, right on the front page of the town's website. Uh, just click on that. There's a, a process. There are um, registration videos that will walk you step by step through. This really gives you, it's more than just phone contact on a landline. It can, uh, you can prioritize yourself and customize the notification however you'd like and whatever uh, you feel is most convenient. It can be done by email, it can be done by texting, it can be, um, e they recommend that each person in the family register independently. So, um, there's a prioritization where if I wanna be contacted by cell phone first for emergencies, I can select a one but on community notifications, maybe I want to get them on email first. So I've got the, the ability to prioritize that. The only way the town has the ability to tap the existing reverse 911 data set for all of the landlines in town is if it's an emergency situation. So if we have a hypothetical, a pending uh, flood, hurricane, something of significant disaster, gas leak in an area, we can tap that information. Um, those are just landlines though, and I think we're concerned with just using that data set as more and more people begin to shut off their landlines and just rely upon cell phones and other forms of technology. So we can't recommend strongly enough. Um, there are postings uh, in every public building. Uh, they release through the Parks and Recreation's annual magazines that go out at all of the libraries at the Senior Center and elsewhere. But probably the easiest way is just to jump onto the front page of the town's website, take a look at it. If they have any questions, they can just contact the town hall here and we'll direct them and connect them with staff who can walk them through the process. But um, by those people uh, in the community registering on the Portal, it'll greatly enhance our ability to, to get the information that they need out to them. Great. Thank you, Andy. Jim. 
Yeah, back to the water um, situation, Andy. Um, so people can bathe. You don't have to boil anything. It's just uh, tier, ter, tier two is as mild a situation, or what's the proper vocabulary for that? And then the second part of that question is, how often is that water tested? Mm -hmm. And does the T Department of Health do it, or does the town do that? Yeah, I'm going to have John respond okay. to that. Okay. We're required by the Safe Drinking Water Act to, we test for um, bacteria twice a month. During that routine testing that we found a, a positive hit for total coliform, again, it's not the fecal. So as a precautionary measure, we disinfected. The, the positive sample came back at the Mortucket tank. One of the problems we have this time of year, the water in the system is still relatively warm, but our demand drops off. So the water doesn't turn over in the tank as quickly as it does during the summertime. We believe that may be part of the problem. Mm. Thank what you, we did was we disinfected the, we locked out the tank, isolated the tank, disinfected the tank, and disinfected the Mortucket Road area. So that's people are seeing that are, you know, sensing the, uh, the, the higher chlorine levels that are in the water. And the water is chlorinated. It, we purchase it from United Water and they do s disinfect the water, but by the time it reaches the Green Hill area, that's quite a distance from their well field. So the samples are the only way you find out. Uh, uh, there's not a smell or a taste that. Well, I mean, in this particular case, because it's the chlorine levels are higher than they typically are, you can smell it versus, you know. Pre-testing, pre I mean, uh, pre-testing. No, no, we, again, we test twice a month for coliform. Right. So we got a positive hit for total. And at that point, it, it triggers a whole type of protocol for follow-up testing. And the follow-up testing necessitated us to do the disinfection. But before the test, is there any way a homeowner, someone would have no. known by smell no. or taste? No. OK. All right, thank you. John, after yes. um, so many tests, how many positive tests before we can you know, back off well, the, with the, the tank is locked out until such time they come back negative. So for coliform, so we won't put that tank back online. We're riding off the East Matunic tank right now for the entire South Shore system. Right. So we have to do follow-up testing now that we've disinfected. And I, my belief is we won't, we will not get a positive at this point. Right. Any other questions? Thank you, John. Yep. Andy, you all set? Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Which brings us to the town solicitor's report. Thank you. Jim. <laughs> Michael, Barrington, plastic bags. What, yes. Can you give us just a quick rundown? Uh, sure. They were trying they're, to ban them, I believe. Their, um, their Conservation Commission came up with a recommendation that the council consider adopting a, a, bag, uh, a ban on the plastic bags, similar to what has been done in Westport, Connecticut, and other um, in Nantucket would be the two New England places, and then a lot of um, cities in California have banned the plastic bags. Um, while they were discussing, and, and while the ordinance was being drafted, Shaw's, which is the only supermarket in Barrington, announced that whether they adopted a ban or not, they were going to do a ban um, voluntarily as an experiment to see whether or not this is something they want to do store-wide. So, um, notwithstanding Shaw's saying they were going to voluntarily do that, and, and also um, I believe CVS, Ace Hardware, others all said that they would voluntarily comply. They decided to co go forward with the ban. So it's just the plastic bags at the checkout counter. It's not the plastic bags in the produce section where you're loading your vegetables and fruits or whatever. It's simply the ones at the... Um, at the checkout. And that's going to take effect on January 1 because they wanted to give all of the store owners time to get through their supply of bags. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is appointments. I believe we have one. Yes, we do. I move that we appoint Catherine Oliver Taylor to the Board of Trustees of the South Kingstown Library. She will, she will serve a term of three years. That would take her from today's date to October, what is it, the 9th, 2015. 
Thank you. Could we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is new business item B. This is a resolution authorizing an award of contract to Edward Rouse Architects, 115 Cedar Street, Providence, Rhode Island, to perform architectural design and consulting services for the EMS, EMS South Station renovation project in an amount not to exceed 28,000, including a contingency per the following schedule of fees with the stipulation the town may terminate the consultant's contract upon completion of phase one and two, task should the town decide to delay implementation of the construction phase of the project and is further described in a memorandum from the director of EMS to the town manager dated October 2nd and entitled EMS South Station Renovations Bid Recommendation. And I just want to reference the chart that's also listed in the agenda. Andy. In this particular matter, the town solicited requests for proposals for uh, consulting architectural and engineering services for uh, an upgrading of the public services building that also houses the EMS uh, South Southern Division, or we call it the South Station. Um, the building itself, as probably we all know it as the old police station, was built back in the 1960s with a second floor and other modifications made in the 1970s. Um, the existing building itself, uh, due to the limitations in terms of the garage sizes and the ceiling heights, have limited the ability of the EMS division to acquire um, what you'd call a standardized size of rescue. Uh, we've been custom uh, ordering the cube sizes for some time uh, to allow it to actually fit within the building. Um, We'd like to be able to move beyond that. Uh, EMS Director Mike DeMello has, has put together a, a plan uh, in multiple phases. Really, phase one addresses all of the preliminary uh, engineering and architectural work uh, and projected costs, preliminary projected costs. Phase two would include bringing um, the, that initial preliminary work to the final level of uh, finished design, uh, finished bid specifications, and final costs. Um, as you reference in terms of the resolution's language, um, at that point, the town has the ability to put, place the project on hold based on the information that we receive. And if, in fact, we, uh, we lack the funding necessary to move to phase three, which is actually uh, bid administration, construction administration, and, and uh, to bidding it out to actually move forward with the project, we can hold at that particular level. Uh, phase one and phase two. Phase one in the preliminary is $6,000. Phase two is $12,000. Um, Mike feels comfortable uh, in terms of focusing on phase one, which would be the garage improvements, just to allow to, to modernize that area, increase the door sizes, allowing for standard types of vehicles to be able to fit, uh, make modifications to a second garage, which would allow for uh, the reserve vehicle to be taken in from the outdoors, placed inside under cover, which um, should dramatically affect its, uh, its life cycle as well, uh, and the condition just being near the, near the coast and the, the winter elements. Um, that particular station uh, in 2001 is when uh, EMS started to use it. On the second floor of that building, for those who haven't been inside, on the opposite end of the building to the south um, is, a, is a room that the EMS staff who are stationed in that location use for a, um, a staff room, a, a place to store gear and so forth. So uh, a second element to this project would be to uh, finish the second floor right over the garage for future modification and enhancement if in fact that station as local needs continue to increase should be needed for uh, anything beyond the 12 hour shifts that we have. Presently, the department has 16, a combination of paramedics and EMTs. They use an additional 12 per diem part-time staff, as well as their director. So um, some of the data that uh, Mike used in, in presenting the recommendation is that you know, certain things are beginning to trend in a direction in terms of mutual aid calls in the area for the University of Rhode Island, as well as the town of Narragansett and Charlestown. Um, in addition, the uh, advanced life support services is starting to trend in an upward uh, direction in terms of the types of calls that are going out. Um, overall, over the past five years, we've seen a, a slow increase from about a 2,500 uh, calls to about 26 and a half at this particular time. So we're starting to just prepare for the trending and feel that the up upgrading of that south station will give us give the staff the ability to, uh, to be ready if, in fact, uh, additional expansion and room is needed. Just great planning for the public safety of our citizens. This is great. Questions here at the table? 
Jim? Uh, Andy, does URI have their own limited EMT service, uh, any kind of emergency service? I thought I saw vehicles up there yeah, at the football one, game, but what? Yeah, there's one rescue that's stationed in Kingston, Kingston oh, Fire. That's our own that, at Kingston. That's uh, in Kingston, that's correct. All right, so, so they URI. have one, so we, uh, Union, I mean, EMS plays a significant role, and, and also Charlestown actually plays a significant role in supporting uh, Ryan Center events, football, other major activities at, on the university but URI campus. does not have their own. They do not. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I move approval of new business item B. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Which brings us to item 13. This is a closed executive session. Closed executive session pursuant to Rhode Island General Law 42-46-5A2 to discuss matters pertaining to litigation relative to the town versus FedEx Freight Incorporated. Can I have a motion, please? I move. I'll just make a motion, and then we'll take the roll call vote. Go into executive session. Go into executive session. And then a second. 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 I think we have a roll call vote, please, Dale. Thank you. Yes. Council Vice President McAtee. Yes. Councilwoman Eddy. Councilwoman Fogarty? Yes. Councilman O'Neill? Yes. Unanimous affirmative vote to uh, recess to close to executive session to discuss matters pertaining to litigation relative to town versus FedEx Frank Inc. at 755. Thank you.